Hey guys, welcome to Rusty Rails. Today we are going to be looking at how to create the canal piling and the retaining wall effect and then we're going to further the layout into making it into a DCC test track. So that should be fun. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to Rusty Rails and that's right, we're going to be making a canal piling effect and it is going to be a video and a half so please sit back, relax and enjoy. So before we start, we've got to say a massive thanks to the sponsor of this video, Rocket Rail. It's Rocket Rail. Uh, Rocket Railways. Rocket Rail. But before we start, we've got to thank... But so before we start, we've got to say a big thanks to Rocket Railways for sponsoring this video. Rocket Railways, trust me, the one-stop shop for all your model railway needs. Make sure you check out the link, it's in the description below onto the video now. Okay, so this is what the final result is going to look like. As you can see, it is a test track and programming track for DCC, which is basically digital trains. Hence the reason it's not moving and the lights are still on full and there's actually sound on this logo. Um, anyway, moving forward. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is this is what I was inspired by is this canal piling effect. I was actually uh, inspired from watching a video from Crew where there's a retaining wall like this. It's pretty cool. So um, this clay and the super glue is literally left over from last projects. So is this static grass here. I think there's two mil. Uh, we're going to be using the Tamea XF72 Brown because it is just it, it's so good. It's really good at everything. Now the cool thing is is these are the sticks we use. They were free. I went to a cafe and they were just like, here, here, here's a thing, don't worry about it, just have a good day. And free wood for customers from Ikea. Make sure you take advantage of that because that's how I made the the basis of this all for free. And I decided to take it one step further. Oh, this part, okay. <laughs> Make sure you have something on. I had the Simpsons on in the background for this because trust me, this gets tedious. Um, you literally have to cut the ends off, the round ends, cut them off, get rid of them, cut them into quarters, glue, leave the space, glue another one. Leave a space, the, the width of a, a coffee stirrer, glue another one. And as you can see, it took hours. It literally did. So there you can see I'm literally using a coffee stick to, to mark this space. And... Uh, yeah, I didn't know how to make this look interesting. I mean, I'm gluing pieces of wood to wood, like, <laughs> is what it is. So, yeah, I've finally finished, right? Cool. <laughs> no. Trim it all down so that they, uh, they're the right size, because, trust me, it'll help this next step. So, trim them down, make them all fit. They don't have to be perfectly trimmed, so don't worry about sanding just yet. But once you think you're finished, you actually have to do it again to get that depth right so anyway once you're doing it again like uh, just rinse and repeat right so you the reason you want to trim them down in the first place is so that when you place them over your fingers ain't pushing the bottom one so you can perfectly line them up sort of thing because you know you don't want the top to be short and then the bottom then you're trying to drop it and you just won't land, land flush finally we have done the second layer <laughs> and uh, it is now literally a uh, again rinse and repeat with the whole cutting away and you can see I, I, I do recycle the wood sort of thing, you know, know that there's a wood bin near me. Now you now you want to gonna sand, uh, sand it all down, make it nice and smooth, make it nice and flush. And yeah, we're not done with the coffee stirrers just yet. You want to cut some long, long uh, strips and this is going to create the top of that wall. Um, and yeah, so here are some, again, leftover from making hard standing area frame. Uh, I use this to create a bank sort of thing so I don't have to use as much clay. A bit of water helps the fibres of the wood stick up and it gives something for the clay to grip onto and it just helps it adhere better without having to use any glue. So nice little trick, use some water, spray it down. Um, yeah, here I'm creating a bank and I must have not filmed me masking taping it off but I masking taped it off clearly because I peeled it off. But um, yeah, so here I'm just using a brown. Now this brown is more for the earth but also because it has a nice orange tinge so it looks like rust and then I go over with a, a more woody brown I suppose um, to create that steel effect and the, the rusted sort of brown there, the rusty earthy brown, uh, it pokes through and it looks quite nice. This Pico micro applicator, forget it, it's useful. Like, look at this, it is doing nothing for me. So anyway, <laughs> upgrade. 
uh, Static King by Woodland Scenics. Uh, luckily, my local model shop rents them, and if you own a model shop, rent out static grass applicators for a fiver a day. Trust me, people only need it for like 10 minutes. It's not worth 90 quid. Uh, there you go, you can see it's created this nice little bank, now it's time to glue the track down, and the track by the way is Code 75 Concrete Sleeper by Pico, I love it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting a call right now. Um, yeah, <laughs> PVA it down and then just leave it overnight. Now, most people go, why are you super gluing the back down and why do sometimes you super glue the track down? Like, that's not permanent. No, but when you start ballasting, it is going to become permanent with the PVA glue you use on ballast. Um, also, you might be going, why are you soldering on the inside of the track when you need to solder on the outside, otherwise the flange of the wheel is going to hit? That's because that's going to be covered by a buffer stop, which you're going to see real soon. Now you can see I've uh, sort of Frankensteined a, uh, a Hornby pluggy thing, uh, because, trust me, it just makes it easier for connecting DCC, it's a lot smoother. Mask and tape it off. Uh, we've gone over this in the past on how I do that. Um, okay, here's a shout out. Scoop, if I'm not answering, please, just give me time. Um, yeah, <laughs> little static grass tufts. And the reason I've gone with using tufts rather than using the applicator with drops of glue is, is it gives variation to the colour without having to buy multiple bags, which I'm only going to use for literally a minute part. So here we are, here's the Acura Buffer Stop, um, and honestly I love them. They're so simple, they're high detailed and they're done. So we use fine light grey uh, ballast, you can use any ballast you want, but if you're modelling OO or HO, uh, please use fine, <laughs> use fine ballast, it looks a lot more realistic. Now this is going to an annoy the... Uh, the rivet counters so please don't message in you know damn rusty rails no trust me this is how i do my wet water i literally have it in a ketchup bottle and i drench it and it just flows and it does its own thing okay i've got a board around it you saw me super gluing that on before that stops it going everywhere and as you can see it looks fine now it's a matter of weathering the track um i think i use the same brown and then a small little black uh, just to go down the middle just to create an oil stain um, and whilst I actually had the black in the uh, in the garden, I decided that you know let let's go around the border and and uh, and finish it off. Talking of finishing off, this is the finish. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I mean, it was a fun little project. I've been wanting to show the canal piling effect for a while, but I've not really had a good excuse to model it. Now I've switched over to DCC. Like literally, this is my first ever DCC thing um, or layout. Yeah. So anyway. I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, yeah, there's definitely going to be more in the future. I'm actually going to be weathering that uh, that logo itself. So, so yeah, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. If you like this new sort of camera recording voiceover sort of thing, let me know. Anything you want to see in the future, again, let me know in the comments. Hit me up with a private message, whatever. However, do try and hit me up on Facebook. The link is in the description to the Rusty Rails uh, Facebook. I will see you in the next one. Stay well, stay safe and everything in between. Peace and love.